This will begin to make things right. Oh, man. Did they just diss George Lucas over the prequels? <laughs> I bet they had a really thought-out trilogy to come out guns blazing like that. Somehow Palpatine returned. What? Well, I bet they had some completely original ideas, at least. It's another Death Star. Oof. Well, at least they respected the lore? Oh, they fly now! They fly now? They fly now! I wanted to love the sequels. I really did. They looked cool and they had some cool moments, but I gotta say, great they were not. And if there's something in the Star Wars universe that you love, then continue to love the hell out of it because who the hell am I to squash that? And I'm not one of those people who bash Star Wars for a living. In fact, seeing Star Wars in the theater when I was seven is what made me want to be a writer. And 40 some odd years later, I may not have a George Lucas sized career, but I managed to make a pretty good living writing TV that was just okay. So believe me, when I criticize Star Wars, it comes from a place of love. It's just, as a fan, I like to imagine what could have been, and as a writer, I like to think, what would I have done? Not that I'm writing fan fiction here, I just want to point out some of the mistakes that were made in the Star Wars sequels. The first mistake, not listening to George Lucas. Yes, the prequels had problems, and a lot of that was due to the fact that there was nobody saying no to George. And a lot of the brilliance of the original trilogy was because of the collaboration with his team. But with that said, he's still George freaking Lucas. Star Wars sprang from his imagination, and he had a good almost 50 years to think about it, so maybe listen to what the guy had to say. George Lucas wrote a treatment for the sequels that Disney largely ignored. Now, should they have followed it to a T? No. It had midi chlorines in it, and that's the first thing that they should have cut from the prequels. But it also had something the sequels didn't. A logical explanation of what happened between the trilogies. In his version, the Empire collapsed and it caused a power vacuum, rival criminal gangs struggled for control, and eventually Darth Maul consolidated power. He takes on a Sith apprentice named Darth Talon, who seduces Han and Leia's son, who is then named Skylar, to the dark side. You see, they had a clear villain. Put a pin in that clear villain thing. Meanwhile, Luke tries to rebuild the Jedi Order, searching for Force-sensitive children. We saw a little bit of that in The Mandalorian. But his attempt to restore the Jedi Order falls apart largely due to the sabotage of Darth Maul and Darth Talon. Meanwhile, Leia rises to form the New Republic. Using that treatment as a starting point and bringing in Lawrence Kasdan or other A-list screenwriters and directors, they could have turned that treatment into a fantastic trilogy. Instead, they decided to start from scratch, which could also have worked, except they made mistake number two not having a unifying voice. It's baffling to me that Disney would spend a billion dollars on a franchise and not meticulously plan out that flagship trilogy. J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson are both amazing filmmakers and either one of them with a team could have come up with a trilogy with a clear beginning, middle, and end. And you could say the same thing about Favreau and Filoni, or Gareth Edwards and Tony Gilroy. Instead, we had J.J. Abrams set up the world and Ryan Johnson undo it, and then had J.J. Abrams undo the undoing. They basically improvised the most anticipated film series in decades, and the number one rule of improv is yes, and. If somebody sets something up, you agree to the premise and add to it. The second movie was basically a two-hour no-but. The next mistake, not listening to Mark Hamill. Normally a writer writes a character without thinking about the actor who plays them because you usually don't know who the actor is going to be. I mean, the exception is a long-running TV show where the actor pours a lot of themselves into the character. And sometimes they listen to the actors and sometimes they don't. And sometimes when they don't, it's bad. In the case of Mark Hamill, the guy grew up playing Luke and had a good 30 years to think about the character. And his number one complaint was that they didn't have a scene with 
he and Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher together. And I got to say, he's 100% right. I mean, this would be like having Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, and John Paul Jones agree to do a Led Zeppelin reunion and then have the concert be each of them on stage by themselves for a half hour doing solo material. This is just such a wasted opportunity. His second criticism, he didn't like the way Luke was portrayed in the second movie. And I gotta say, I agree with him. We could have seen Luke have a dark moment and want to quit, kind of like Achilles in the Iliad, but Achilles realized that being a whiny little emo wasn't going to help anybody. In fact, it was going to hurt his cause and his friends. And Luke's the same way. He's not going to turn his back on his friends. And I know he comes back at the end of the second movie, but he wouldn't have had to come back to save them if he had never left them in the first place. The next mistake, not clearly defining the protagonist. So either Ray is a Palpatine or she's a nobody. Decide which and go with it. If she's a nobody, that's fine. Just figure out a reason why we're telling the story about her. And if she is Palpatine's granddaughter, they need to set that up in the first movie and make that the driving force of the trilogy. It's not something you could just tack on in the opening crawl of the third movie. If that's where this was going to be headed, they needed to start there. Did he have a band of loyalists trying to figure out a way to use the Force to revive him? Kind of like Voldemort and his Death Eaters. And then we would have needed to see that scene where he comes back to life. Or is he like Sauron in Lord of the Rings, a disembodied spirit that they're trying to bring back to life and we have to prevent that from happening? Either way, they got to figure out what it is. And I don't know if... Palpatine returning from the dead was the best choice, but if that's what they're going to do, you got to do it. They also needed to develop the main protagonist. If it is going to be about Rey, she needs to fail and overcome those challenges. Instead, she figures out how to wield a lightsaber the first time she touches it and defeats Kylo Ren in battle. I mean, think about Luke. Yoda didn't say to him, hey, remember your really easy success in the cave? The next mistake not developing the main villain. Like I mentioned earlier, Lucas's treatment had a clearly defined villain. If the big bad was going to be Palpatine, they needed to set that up. If the big bad was going to be Snope, who the hell is Snope? It's been three movies and I still don't even know who he is. Is he a clone of Palpatine? Is he this kid grown up like someone on the internet suggested? And actually that kind of could have been cool. Whatever he was needed to be explained, and we need to know what Kylo Ren's relationship was with him. The next mistake, not developing the relationship between the main hero and the main villain. It's important to have a good protagonist. It's important to have a good antagonist. But the thing that takes a good story to a great story is that relationship. Think about the twist at the end of Empire Strikes Back and how that elevated this franchise to a whole new level. Think about the relationship between Harry Potter and Voldemort. The fact that Harry is basically a horcrux, or his scar is a horcrux, however you want to define it, really elevated that franchise to a whole nother level. The next mistake, the sequel start a movie too late. Think about it. We start and the First Order is basically the Empire, and the New Republic are already acting as if they're a small band of rebels. This makes no sense. How did we get here? Now, starting in medias res can work. That worked in the original. We see the opening crawl. We learn a little bit. A big ship takes over a little ship. We get that these are the good guys and the princess puts something in a droid and sends him off on his way. We're in. We're invested. But this is not that. We can't just redo episode four. We need to know what happened after the happy end of Return of the Jedi. How about we see the movie where the New Republic starts to fall apart and the bad guys rise to power? If it's Lucas's idea of it being Darth Maul, great. If not, figure out who that is. Is that Snoke and is that Kylo Ren? Let's see it happen. Essentially, this could have been like a condensed version of the last two prequels where the Republic falls apart and the bad guys secretly rise to power. And then the movie that became The Force Awakens would have worked better as a second movie. And if Rey's a Force-sensitive person, maybe she could bring Luke out of his funk and give him a reason to come back after his failure. Now, in an ideal world, or should I say in an ideal galaxy, we could have had those three actors when they were younger and do a trilogy much closer to the events of Return of the Jedi, but that just wasn't in the stars. But still, 
I would have liked to see how that era ended, even if the actors were older and were in more of a mentor role. It's just a much better way to start the new sequel. At least that's my humble opinion. And if they had done any of these things, the butterfly effect would have taken over and all the oft-mentioned mistakes just wouldn't have been there. You know the ones I'm talking about. There's no need to go into details. But there's some wasted potentials that they set up in The Force Awakens. The first, wasting Finn. And the idea of a stormtrooper developing a conscience and turning good is really interesting, and it was something they really could have explored. Instead, they turned his character into a buffoon, which is really not cool for John Boyega. And you could kind of say the same thing about Poe. He didn't have much cool stuff to do in the second or third movie and really would have been better off dying at the end of the first. And that's a shame, because these are two great actors who deserved better. But the biggest sin... They wasted Han Solo's death. This scene really needed to matter more. If Kylo Ren's character is the Darth Vader of this trilogy, this needs to be the moment where he can't turn back. This is his Michael Corleone killing Salazzo and McCluskey. This is his Walter White. Well, I don't know which moment you want to consider Walter White's point of no return, but the bottom line is this has to be the most significant moment in Kylo Ren's development, and it's really not. Or it could have meant that Han sensed that Kylo couldn't back out now, and he sacrificed himself, hoping that there was still some spark of goodness in Kylo Ren, that he could bring his child back to the light, kind of like a reverse image of Luke and Vader at the end of Jedi, but that's not really what happened either. Yeah, we had Kylo Ren meeting with Han's ghost, but what was that? The non-Jedi have Force ghosts? Was he hallucinating it? I don't even know what to make of that. Instead, we kill off Han without either Leia or Luke there to react to it, and it doesn't really matter that much to Kylo. Seems like Han's death was put at this point in the movie just so they could have an imitation of Obi-Wan's death from the original. But this is Han freaking Solo. Ben sacrificed himself so Luke can escape and he could come back to help Luke through the Force. His death mattered. And going back to my point about the sequel starting a movie too late, maybe if we could seen a little bit of Kylo and Han's relationship before Kylo turned to the dark side, this scene would have had more meaning. Instead, they shoved in an imitation of Obi-Wan's death before the imitation destroying of the imitation Death Star. If you saw my video on why Empire Strikes Back was so good, it's because they didn't fall for the sequel trap of just repeating each beat that was in the original. The Force Awakens basically repeats each beat of Episode 4, and Han Solo deserved better and the viewers deserved better. Think about Game of Thrones for a second, and if you haven't seen the first season or read the first book, skip ahead a little bit because I'm about to ruin it. When Ned Stark died, it was shocking, but it was not there just for the shock effect. It mattered. The entire trajectory of the series turned on a dime at that moment, and the fact that it happened at Joffrey's hands sent the Seven Kingdoms down a path they could not turn from. Can you say the same thing about Han's death? Not really. His death didn't really change Kylo's character, and it was minimized because we didn't see a reaction from Luke. And the decision to have he and Leia separated really takes away a lot of the power. I mean, he's her ex-husband that they have an estranged child with. She's no longer the love of his life. That's some real wasted potential there. And the fact that they made him return to being a smuggler means that his death doesn't even affect the New Republic or the Rebellion, whatever they even are at this point. So, you know, if you're going to kill off one of my childhood heroes, at least make it matter. <laughs>